Hi, my name is Matt Widgery from mattwidgery.com. Today we're going to be having a look at 10 top tips for beginners in street photography to get you out there taking amazing pictures like Henri Cartier-Bresson. Tip number one, keep the shutter speed high. We're looking at a minimum of 250th of a second for most applications, and that means that, uh, first of all, your subjects are not gonna be blurry, but it also means that you're not gonna get camera shake if you have to whip around very suddenly as you're walking along and take a picture of an amazing moment to capture that decisive moment on the street. Number two, keep the aperture tight. So we're looking normally at a range of between f8 and f16, and that means you're gonna have plenty of depth of field. That means from the bits more or less in front of where you are, right the way to beyond where your subject's likely to be, which in most cases is a couple of meters or 10, 12 feet away from where you're you know, taking a picture from them. Uh, everything will be nice and in focus, and that way you're not going to get an incredible lovely moment and it'll be all blurry and you've lost the shot. Number three, zone focusing. For those of you who don't know what zone focusing is, check it out, there's a link on the screen now, but that will greatly improve the time that it takes in between pressing the shutter and the camera going off, particularly if you're using one of the systems with a slower autofocus system, something like the Fuji's, uh, but even with a, a you know, high-end DSLR or whatever it happens to be, the autofocus is easily thrown off by things changing light, not being very contrasty, having backlight and all that kind of stuff, so zone focusing for street photography uh, allows you to take pictures much, much quicker. Number four, smile and say thank you. So at the end of taking the picture, click like that, have a look, engage the person's eye, the subject's eye, just smile and say, cheers, thanks for that, appreciate it, something like that, but make sure you smile, show that you're not being a creepy weirdo, and then uh, they're much less, less likely to come over and uh, ask you to delete the picture or be otherwise weirded out by you popping up from nowhere and pressing the shutter. Number five, long lenses, and why using them sometimes makes you look like a creepy weirdo. When you start out in street photography, the temptation is always to hang back a little bit and sort of stay out of the scene of what's going on so that you don't uh, get spotted. It's a completely natural human reaction. The tendency then is what you end up doing is uh, hiding in the bushes across a park with a very long telephoto lens, taking pictures of strangers. Okay, they might not see you, but if you ever do get caught, that's much, much harder to explain, and you do look like a creepy weirdo. I would personally recommend that you use a wider lens which gets you right up in front of the uh, subjects and you're in part of the scene and that means when people look at your pictures they will feel like they're part of the scene too. Don't be afraid of shooting with whatever camera you've got, regardless if it's a big camera or a small camera. There are plenty of places online that will tell you that you must have a teeny tiny small little black camera that doesn't draw attention to yourself when you're taking street pictures. Because, you know, you could never use a big Canon or Nikon DSLR because it's too big and frightening and people run away in the opposite direction. But that's not always the case. Consider it from this point of view. Many women actually prefer to see, if they're going to have their picture taken on the street, they would prefer or get more confidence um, that the person is a bit legit if they've got a big uh, sort of pro looking camera uh, you know and all the gear because uh, you know they look like they're sort of you know they're supposed to be there as opposed to somebody with a little teeny tiny camera again it comes down to this not being a creepy weirdo thing you know they're looking like a bit of a spy cam that they're trying to sort of take pictures surreptitiously so from a female perspective especially if you're a male photographer going out and taking pictures in the street uh, you know be avert about what you're doing, you know, be upfront, uh, engage the person. Even if you're taking a candid shot, take the candid shot without them noticing, but then try and engage their eye afterwards. Uh, you know, wait for their reaction and make sure you're there ready, being open and saying thank you. And don't be afraid, if, you've got, if all you've got is a small camera, don't worry about using that. If all you've got is a big camera, don't worry about using that. There are some fantastic photographers out there. Jo uh, look at Joel Majorowicz's um, images. There'll be links to his site in, in the bottom of the uh, bottom of the show notes here. And for a while in uh, in the 1980s, I believe, he always used to shoot with a little tiny Leica, Leica uh, 35 millimeter film camera. And at some point he started using big plates cameras, I think even 8x10 or something like that, to take pictures on the streets of New York. If you're happy carrying it around, then certainly don't worry about taking street photography with a bigger camera. Number seven, one body, one lens. Don't take every bit of camera gear you own out onto the street because while you're looking for that decisive moment, you will miss them because you're deciding whether or not you should be using a 35mm lens or a 50 or an 80 or maybe you should break out the zoom or what about putting a neutral density filter on the front of it. Oh, don't worry about it. 
Take one camera, one body out on the street with you and then you're not worried about anything apart from finding those moments. Number eight, not all street photography has to be candid. So for a lot of people, you know, they look at uh, the works of the sort of, you know, the, the, the great masters, you know, the Bruce Gildens and the Henri Cartier-Bressons and people like this as well, take these amazing candid shots on the street and they do look fantastic and they're capturing these slices of life. But they don't always have to be like that. If you are more confident going up and asking for somebody's street portrait, that is another brilliant way of doing it. It takes a little bit of bravery to overcome the first couple of times when you actually ask somebody, but invariably people are quite happy to have their picture taken, especially if you're sort of seeking out characters, people that are dressed in an interesting way, uh, you know, they've got a bit of, uh, bit of a look to them. Uh, most of the time they know they've got a bit of a look to them, they're happy, and they're proud of the way they look and they're, you know, overt characters and so they're more than happy to have, your, to have their picture taken. And they can always say no, it's the worst that can happen. It's a bit like dating, you know, the worst that they can ever say is no, you can move on and find somebody else. So, street portraiture is another brilliant way to do it if you don't like the idea of taking pictures of strangers without them knowing. Number nine. So, this one is looking at other photographers' work. There are fantastic street photographers from down the ages, from Robert Frank to Bruce Gilden to Henri Cartier-Bresson to... Uh, Joel Mahorovich to Vivian Mayer to whoever is the person that, that floats your boat most in this particular genre but go and have a look look at them all see what you like about their work and see what you don't like don't spend all your time looking at the street photography posts that people put up on Facebook and on Flickr and 500px because although some of them are good you know some of them are great most of them are sort of medi mediocre. Most of them are people like me and you, who aren't these amazingly famous people that have had their exhibitions in MoMA and have created images that will last down the years. So go and find the people that have done, because if you want to improve at anything, you should look at the people that are doing the very, very best that's out there in the world and try and see what it is that you like about theirs and try and work out what your personal style is from there. Number 10, go out and shoot every day if you can and if you can't do it then six days is better than seven five days is better than six as Gary Vaynerchuk would say but keep on as many times as you can going out and taking pictures because the more you shoot the better you'll get if you spend all day sitting at home reading forums about uh, photography and you know looking at different bits of gear you can go out and doing all that kind of stuff rather than going out and taking pictures your photography will improve at a very very slow rate you're out there all the time every spare moment you get taking pictures you have got a fighting chance that you will see an improvement and when you look back at the pictures you took this time last year and this time two years ago you will see that you're getting better and that is the driver for moving yourself forward as an artist so that's it, that was my 10 top tips for beginner street photographers to get out there and enjoy shooting street photography. It's something that I love. Um, I run workshops on, the, on street photography. I've had exhibitions on street photography myself and I absolutely adore it. So I do do it in every spare moment that I possibly can. So I hope to see you out on the streets one day soon. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers. <laughs>